the ultra high end, most life critical use case for augmented reality imaginable, outfitting the US Army with ruggedized HoloLens technology. David, you've been following this for years. When you wrote this story, you described some of the use cases, and I don't think people really grasp that they were actually talking about doing some of these things with this hardware. Can you walk us through that? This is called HoloLens IVAS, and this is, as far as I'm aware, the highest end see-through AR display system that's available anywhere in any actual real use case. It's essentially a HoloLens 2 on steroids, souped up with a bunch of extra sensors and a completely different optical system that has a much wider field of view. Some of the reports have indicated it's around 80 degrees horizontal, which is truly stunning for a see-through AR system. And the US Army had already kind of got an order in of 5,000 of these units for this contract that could be worth billions over the next 10 years, many, many billions. But field testing had been showing issues that they were trying to solve. And they had hoped that the most recent field testing that was being presented to the US Congress, which makes the procurement decisions for the US military, would be positive, but it was not. And it showed issues that were mission affecting physical impairments, including headaches, eye strain, nausea, and reliability issues with essential functions feeling. Some of the other tests also showed an issue where if you've ever seen any of these see-through AR systems, you'll notice that as an outside observer, you can actually notice the light in the eye of the person. So if you were in a combat situation in darkness and you're the enemy, you can actually notice the kind of light reflecting from their AR visor, which is obviously terrible for any kind of stealth. So there were all kinds of issues and Congress has basically blocked the next $500 million order of 6,900 units that the army was hoping to procure. The initial 5,000 batch will still go forward, but it will be used for training. And in response to this, the US army has awarded Microsoft a $125 million contract for a new 1.2 version, which should have a lower profile heads up display with a distributed counterweight for improved user interface and comfort, as well as significant software changes that should significantly improve the reliability and reduce the power draw. Because you can kind of see here where the power pack went to that had to run this thing. And obviously the heavier that is, the more burden on the soldier, the less they can carry in terms of other useful supplies for military operations. So it'll be interesting to see Will this continue to be, as some people would describe, a kind of boondoggle where these technical issues just pile up and pile up and it never gets ready for deployment? Or will they actually get it resolved? Because the U.S. Army has indicated that their hope, their optimistic hope here is that every soldier eventually, say by the next decade, is outfitted with these. Ian was talking about what are the actual use cases. It's giving you the situational awareness that you would get in a video game in real life. So you look around and you see blue dots over all of your friendly units. You look up into the sky and you see, you know, a, a blue icon on friendly aircraft. You see a red icon on enemy aircraft. If your commander sets an objective on a map, that will be translated into 3D space in the headset. And you see that it just transforms spatial awareness. There are others from other really interesting use cases. The US Army is actually trying to do this system called the soldier born sensor, where some soldiers are given a personal drone that they can clip to themselves and send out for tactical reconnaissance. And this headset could show a picture in picture view of what that drone was seeing. 